often, when you think you know people, it turns out that you really don't. If you entrust an old friend, a neighbor with the care of your pet, and she betrays that trust, letting the animal loose on a sub-freezing day in Manhattan, a helpless creature also in need of medical care, and who had been in the country only several months, that is an act of deceit, of cruelty, criminal negligence, and atrocious gesture, compounded by the fact that your friend, whom you thought you could trust, did not lift a finger to help find the helpless creature after he had fled into the cold, merciless streets of the Upper East Side on that cold winter day in February 2009. But rather than commence in media race in the middle of the tragedy, which resulted in the death of my dog, uh, JP, or Yarpy as it is pronounced in Afrikaans, since when I rescued him, uh, I named him after a South African World War girl, J uh, Yarpy Fury, veteran of the Boer War, 1899 uh, 1902. Let us begin at the beginning. Cheryl Drum moved into 414 East 78th Street in 1998, and we quickly became friends. I had four dogs at the time rescued from various places of despair in the world, and at the time she was a foster parent to a pup, Ginger, whom she intended to return to the shelter until I convinced her to keep the pibe, the pet, promising to walk Ginger when Cheryl was at work. Miss Drum reciprocated by walking my brood. Relations were amicable. Fast forward to 2008. I was assigned by an NGO which deployed me to southern Senegal, Ziyanshore, on the border with Guinea Bissau. It was a tour de service lasting for an entire school year, 2008-2009, and involved being a teacher trainer in various lycées dispersed throughout the bush of the Basque Casamance, at the time on full war footing due to the presence of a rebel army intent on seceding from Senegal. Alexander Harrison is a devoted educator with chalk in his blood. I look forward to the challenge, which would, which would be my fourth year, including one as a Fulbright, in the service of the African people. I have a PhD in African Studies from NYU, with specialization in social movements in Algeria during the waning days of Algerie Française. While returning from downtown Zayanshore one day to my apartment in the quartier of Chateau d'Eau, I came across a little dog in the dusty streets, looking forlorn and woebegone. I picked him up. It was near the Place Jean-Paul II, and returned home with him, fed him some laughing cow cheese, a tin of corned beef, and tended to his wounds. Aware that veterinary care in Africa at the time was limited, doctors themselves with Suze Pipe, I booked passage on a return flight to the U.S. with uh, Yarby, where I intended to have him looked after by vets at the Port Washington Animal Hospital, then to return to Senegal to complete the mission. Meanwhile, when he was out of the animal hospital, I asked Cheryl to look after him in her, her apartment, pledging that I would be back by the end of June. She agreed and I returned to Ziegenshore, convinced that Yarpy would be in good hands until my return stateside. Espérance trahi, hopes to see. One day in February 2009, while in my office near the market, and in, in which once was the headquarters of Abika Cabral, former freedom fighter for Guinea-Bissau, just across the border, I received an email from Cheryl which is one of the most alarming, depressing messages of my life. JP got out. Yarpy got out. It broke my heart. Yarpy had slipped his collar and ran off onto the merciless streets of the Upper East Side on one of the coldest days of the winter, in sub-freezing weather, with a skin infection to boot, which, as Ju Juliana, my spouse who was staying in my apartment at the time, informed me, Cheryl was too squeamish treat. Why then has she accepted 
the responsibility of caring for Yarby in my absence. She should have done the intelligent thing and left him with the veterinarians in the hospital in Port Washington. Yarby had been in country in the U.S. less than two months, had come from a tropical climate where the average temperature was over 90 degrees. How could Cheryl have done something so cruel to a dear, defenseless little dog? Compounding the irremediable was Cheryl's refusal to even look for Yarby, as if she could not have cared less. Had the situation been the reverse, and Ginger, her dog, been lost, I would not have, have had to be asked twice to mobilize the entire neighborhood to find her. But Cheryl did zero to find Yarby. Inexplicable and incorrigibly sad. That was all Cheryl wrote in the email. JD got out. No explanations, no effort to enlist the help of her friend from the floor above, Robert Stevenson. Unable to be released from my contract until June of the, of, of the same year, several months away, I hoped against hope that together Cheryl and Stevenson would do the intelligent thing, the compassionate thing, and undertake a search for Yarby. But the stamina the character, the compassion to undertake the quest to find the poor little dog was not forthcoming. Both could not have cared less. Jean-Paul Sartre, French existentialist philosopher and novelist, Le Chemin de la Liberté, wrote in his novels about niveau de culpabilité, or levels of culpability, guilt. Stevenson was not only one of Cheryl's closest friends, a confidant, was, was also no mere locataire. He was the mainstay of the building. If the roof needed repairing, Stevenson had the skills to do it. Likewise, if he thought the stairs needed to be repainted, he did that as well. He built Cheryl a new bunk bed to replace the old one she had, and did numerous favors for me as well, which I reciprocated. So Robert Stevenson had to have known of Yarby's escape that cold winter afternoon. But like Cheryl, made no effort to find him. He s'en He did not care. Poor Yarby. Sad, incorrigible irony was that they did not check with veterinary officers in the vicinity. The logical thing to do since when a dog on a leash is found in the street, most responsible folk would take to the nearest vet. If Stevenson and Cheryl had checked, they would have found him in an animal hospital at 72nd and 2nd Avenue, a facility run by a Dr. Bunny, DBM, who I learned later kept Jamie and Jake Yarby for weeks, but unable to get in touch with, with me, put him to sleep. I learned this after putting up posters in the neighborhood offering a $5,000 reward for his return. Animal cruelty is a felony in Florida as well as in New York. What aroused my suspicions about Cheryl Drum, about her alliel pensee, or ulterior motives, was that she had expressed no remorse, and when Stevenson could not be bothered to look for him after he slipped, slipped his collar on that cold day in February in 2009 and took off down the street. When I asked her about it on my return, she looked at me as if to say, how dare you, Alexander Harrison, even ask me, and threatened to call the police if I queried her, queried her again on Yarby's disappearance. Robert Stevenson graduated from Yale University with a BA summa cum laude in mathematics, yet lacked the bon sens de cheval, poor sense to undertake a search for Yarby, along with Cheryl, after he learned that the dog had run away. You, Stevenson, did not act when it counted. I excuse everything else you have done, which was less than virtuous, such as sending your best friend and roommate packing when you found out he had contracted HIV. You told me then that since you yourself had escaped being inf infected with the same flail, you would devote your life to helping others. I recall the li relief on your face when you told me that, was refusing to help define Yarby your way of helping others. Above all, since you both, you and Cheryl, knew how much that dog meant to me. 
I always looked the other way, tried to ignore the numerous times that you, were, you would indiscreetly invite young men to your apartment, presumably for a night's frolicking, but which nonetheless put the entire building at risk. Je m'en fous. I did not care about any of that. But the one time when I needed your help after Yarby's escape, when you could have made a difference by helping look for him, n'étiez pas un rendez-vous, or in plain old Anglo-Saxon English, you were no show. I live at present in a bicoque, or shed, on the Middle River with my honeys, months rescue from streets of West African cities, and Wilton Manors, the gayest city per capita in the country, and residents whom I have little to do with show a philanthropy, a kindness for abandoned pets, which is truly remarkable. Were that Stevenson and his friend Cheryl Drum capable of the same degree of altruism, concern for a lost pet, which both of you failed to demonstrate for Yarby. Both of you held his fate in your hands, but by not acting to save him, are responsible for his death. There is a memorable line from an old Western movie, spoken by the protagonist, he says, there's no coming back from a killing. The past is predatory, and even though 10 years have passed, Yarpy's death and your lack of concern for him continue to haunt me to this day. Nothing, no event or person has more adversely affected my life than the loss of Yarpy. Postscript. Alice Murray from the Embassy in Dakar came down on, a, on an official visit to Ziggenshore in March 2009, and in the course of her visit, offered me a promotion to USAID with a raise in salary from the $800 monthly to grosso modo $60,000 yearly. A friend from the PRF, Paul Régional de Formation, had recommended me, based on my record as a teacher trainer in lycées located in the Bruce, uh, Bush of Basque Casamance, and my volunteer efforts on behalf of victims of landmines, casualties of the civil war between secessionists who sought independence of the region and armed forces from the government in Dakar. However, I had to turn down the offer, still hopeful of finding Yarby, whose whereabouts in New York at that point were still unknown. Hopes deceived. As indicated, by the time I found out where Yarby was, it was too late. He had been put down by the veterinarian at 72nd Street and 2nd Avenue. Neither Cheryl Drum nor Robert Stevenson ostensibly good friends and animal lovers, and bothered to intervene to try to save them. Quand même, c'est une honte.